Okay, the next thing that we're going to look at is how Adios handles adjusting the stereoscopic pairs. We're going to go in here to our effects and notice under video filters we have stereoscopic adjuster and we're going to drop that onto the line. You can also just drop it right into the information bin directly if you'd like to. And let's open that up and let's take a look at that tool. You notice we have our left and our right. For now we're going to leave it with both. And what we're going to do is we've got horizontal adjustment. We've got a mask left and a mask right. And we even have flip. So if you're working with a beam splitter, you might need to flip eyes. Also, if you're working with a GoPro, uh, you'll need to flip eyes. And you also have trimming, which works to go ahead and trim and adjust your, uh, your size of your frame. But let's go into the basic. Let's see how the stereoscopic adjuster, with the click of just one button, you can rectify everything. Just click this rectify button. And what it does is it automatically adjusts everything. And let's click auto trimming because that'll zoom it out just slightly so that you don't have any edge violations. Let's see exactly what that just did. It went in and it did see a slight deviation, very, very minor on the vertical. It also saw a slight deviation on the zoom. That's the auto trimming that came into play. And it also had a slight keystone problem that needed to be corrected. And it sees this much better than your eyes can see it, to be quite honest. And now what we've got is we've got for our vertical and zoom and keystone, rotational errors, uh, anything like that, we've got it automatically corrected with just the click of one button uh, and a second button for auto trimming. Now you're left to just go ahead and adjust your horizontal, your interaxial, wherever you want that to be. And of course you can adjust that based on how you want it to look. Uh, you can also keep in mind that your, uh, your furthest point in this shot can't be more than 3% of the total screen that you're using. So this gives you, this is where your creative control comes in. Uh, you can do that either by scrolling, just grabbing the handle here and moving it. You can also go here and actually enter the numbers that you want. You can use your scroll wheel as I'm doing right now on my mouse or I can grab it, hold down the left key on your mouse and pull down. Notice it changing or push up. It will continue to change even as you get past the screen. Okay, so we've made our adjustments, but let's say that we want to change our adjustment, our horizontal adjustment, our any our interaxial adjustment uh, in the shot and perhaps the shot before it is got a different setting and you're trying to float the convergence to go ahead and match the previous shot so that you don't create eye strain for your viewer. So then just click here, click here, and we're ready to start. So let's say that our other shot, we're matching to a really wide convergence right there at this point. But then as we move forward, we wanna bring it back. Now I'm gonna make it pretty short but what I'm going to do is I'm going to change my convergence and I'm pulling my mouse down and I'm bringing this together to where we're con creating the convergence plane on the edge of his jacket right here. And now what we're going to do is we're going to test it and we're going to click playback from within here and you're going to notice that the convergence is already shifting and changing. And here it is. And as we get to him, there it is. And let's say that we have to match this. We've already done our editing. And at the end of it all, uh, we want to go back out to the other convergence. Let's create another spot so it'll hold the same convergence. And then by the end, uh, we want to make it shift out uh, further maybe to match the next shot. So now we get to this point, we're still converged on him. So now we get to this spot, we're still converged on him. And as we hit play going out of the clip, notice the convergence is shifting back out and going to a much wider convergence setting. And there it is. And if we click okay, our, line, our clip on the line will reflect those changes as well. Let's turn off this audio for a second. So as we play back, 
Notice as it goes in, our convergence is already changing right here. And just where we told it to, there it is. And that's how easy stereoscopic adjusting is. One more very important tool we're going to take a look at that always is included with EDIUS is the Layouter tool. Now what they've done in changing the Layouter tool is they've given you some additional things that you can do with it. Let's close our stereoscopic adjuster. Let's bring up the Layouter tool. And you notice now we have a 2D and a 3D setting. Let's click the 3D setting and I'm going to quickly show you one of the nice little features here. You now have an adjustment for lens separation by percentage or by pixel and a zero parallax tool. These are used to do stereoscopic correction and for working with 2D objects in 3D space. This will make your maximum lens separation whatever you want it to be. You can increase that, decrease that as much as needed. Uh, and zero parallax basically defines the point on the picture. You notice you can see a little bit what it's doing on the screen. It's moving it over. It defines the, the point of depth in the picture where your zero parallax point is. And these can be very helpful tools.